All right, hello there, the internet. Uh, Chris and I are back. It's a, it's a later episode, but we have a good excuse. We were covering all the Vegas races, so we had a lot going on in terms of chaos and madness on Sunday and Monday. So we're recording this on a Monday evening. Um, should be uploaded, if not super late tonight, at tomorrow morning. But now, Chris, this is your second time covering Vegas. How did it go this time for you? Um, definitely a lot better than the first time. Um, I felt like I was more, um, aware of everything as far as, like, where to shoot. Um, I think the first time I was just kind of following you, just seeing, like, where you were going, because I honestly, I had, like, literally no idea, um, where to shoot, like, where to kind of go to. And I feel like this time we kind of knew where we had more access to, um, as far as like, <coughs> excuse me. As far as earlier this year, um, I know we pretty much just kind of shot like by the the in infield area, like kind of like turns one, turns turns three and four. This time we kind of shot between. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Jesus, Chris is I'm dying. dying. Are you okay? Do you need water yeah. or something? Yeah. Um. So I know we shot this time. We shot it like around turns one and two on the infield and the out by by the fence, which is pretty cool. I will say um, the turn two is goaded when it comes to shooting. Like, I think the best shots I got all weekend were <clears throat> up on the outside of two. Yeah, no, that was great. Um, I got a lot of good shots from there. Um, and then kind of going towards the front stretch, um, the beginning. Right by the exit of pit road was kind of sketchy, but as you kind of go along more down the way, you get a lot of really good shots, especially right before start finish, and then right after start finish. Um, so yeah, it was it was pretty great. The only bad side, I, I don't think we saw any shooting points. I saw some photographers in three, three and four, but there was like no open area to kind of shoot from, so they were kind of working with uh, what they got. Yeah, but, uh, there's no no cutouts in three and four for some reason. <coughs> Not entirely sure why, but yeah, there's nothing there. But um, overall, it was fun. I had a I had a really great time. Um, yeah, a lot of footwork too. Um, my oh, my yeah. legs were pretty sore, but I enjoyed I, it. I I apologize. I speed walk, and so I was kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> I already I have like, long Michael, legs, wait. and I walked fast already, and so I kind of like. I would realize that you weren't as close behind me as I thought you were, so I would stop and turn around. You'd be like eight miles behind me, and I'm like, oh, shit, I should probably slow down for a second. I know. I was like, I'm trying to keep up, but I can't I, Can't walk as fast. I got them target fulfillment legs. That's why. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little... I'm like about a year away from my target, target experience. Yeah, you no longer got them speedy legs. No. Nah. But um, it was it was fun shooting shooting vegas i have a lot of fun shooting everywhere every year um the one thing we didn't do this year that we did in not this year but the one thing we didn't do this time around that we did in march or february or whatever the hell the spring race was um was we didn't shoot down the back stretch because what we did in march is we went into the neon garage and we stood up on the little like oh catwalk yeah thing that aims toward the back stretch we shot down the catwalk thing because that's just an open public area, and it was just it's just easy to get to to shoot the back stretch. And like we didn't do that this time around. I I realized I, that I after felt we like left. The, I felt like that would have been perfect with my camera because it was a longer longer lens. So yeah, I feel like we <laughs> um, should definitely do that again when it comes to coming back in March. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's definitely for sure. Go. Yeah, I got everything else but that part. Um, but I feel like. We pretty much hit all the good spots, um, even like uh, like throughout the race. Like I think the Xfinity series was a perfect perfect length because we started on the front stretch, worked our way to turn one, one and two, then went out to the outside of turn one and two, then kind of worked our way to the front stretch, and then from the front stretch we kind of went back down to. I don't think we hit three and four. We, we didn't. I, that's why I wanted to hit three and four on Sunday was because I realized after Saturday, because um, here's the thing. I don't know why, but um, I have never shot the I think it's because I just didn't really know how to get to it. I didn't realize you had to walk up the fucking tunnel hill, but I didn't really know how to get to the turn two photo tower. And so Saturday, I was just kind of figuring out how to get there. And so 
while the Xfinity race is a pretty good length, um, we, we spent most of it trying to figure out how to get to the um, turn two tower and stuff and getting back mm-hmm. up onto the outside of the fencing. And so Sunday was way more efficient because now we knew the best way to get places. And so we were able to kind of hit it and go, go, go. So we didn't hit three and four on the inside um, on Saturday, but we definitely got down there on Sunday. Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of excited to do trucks next year because I want to get some good shots of them. <clears throat> um, kind of on the uh, outside of turn two. So I feel like for trucks, we should definitely um, divide and conquer because that's going to be a very short race. Yeah. And so that's going to be one of those where we're going to have to like do it really fast. Yeah, that's going to be a quick one because, yeah, like you said, it's, there's only so much time. You know what? I think uh, what I might between... do, you know what? I'm, now that I'm brainstorming out loud, I might just try to get all of my infield shots like right at the start. I think what I might do for trucks next year, what I did for the cup race this year, and just and only just take all of my pit road shots in like the first three laps <laughs> and then immediately just book ass down into turn one because we're going to have to do it really fast. Yeah. And just only spend like a small handful of laps in every location if we want to hit all the different spots. Yeah, I'll have to figure something out too. Yeah, my only concern is that the truck race is always a night race, and so I feel like um, our our cameras either maybe we're stupid, maybe we just don't know how to do it. But I I cannot shoot in the dark. And then I only I I take like a hundred photos, and like two of them are usable. Like obviously that's not true. I take more than a hundred photos, but like. To try to scale it down, if I take like a hundred photos, only two of them are usable because the camera doesn't focus, the lighting's weird, everything's out of focus and blurry, or it just doesn't pick up. It's like maybe I just don't know how to shoot in the dark. Maybe it's a user error thing, but that just seems to be a common theme shooting the truck races. Yeah, no, it seems like a common thing because it's just, <coughs> um, it's just really hard to to kind of get that shot. Because I know I, I had a couple of issues like when we we're when we first started out in turn two. Um, a lot of the shots kept getting were like really blurry because it took a little bit for it to kind of focus. Um, but I would say probably after a lap or two, it kind of went back into focus. But the thing is, like, you're trying to catch one guy, and then like you know he comes up like two seconds later after you're shooting somebody somebody else, and now you're just yeah. like, okay, I gotta go back and get that guy again next next lap. Or and, um, I don't know. It's just like it's like a really really. It's a hustle. It it is, and like, it was really difficult Friday because it's like when they were practicing, everything was great, but when the Xfinity cars went out to qualify Friday <coughs> night, that's when I started having all my camera issues. I'm just like nothing's focusing, everything's blurry. It's just like sometimes you get really there's like there's like two frames of like the pan when I shoot that everything is perfect, but. It's it's difficult to get that, and so like, I didn't use any of the photos that I took during qualifying because most of them were just horrendous. And that's that's my fear going into truck racing every single year is that how many of these are actually going to be decent? <laughs> yeah. Because the lighting at Vegas isn't very good either. Yeah, like, it's, it's a fairly the, the problem, dark track. The, pro- the problem with cannons too, it's like it's just like you have to really readjust the the lighting on it too. Because I know sometimes I just do autofocus, and then for the most part it'll work, but it's a hit or miss, you know. <coughs> um, yeah. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm starting to like Sony a lot better now. Like just that whole weekend, I had no, no issues at all. I had not one single one. I would say the only issue I had was just my my gimbal, but it had nothing to do with my my camera, but. Yeah, it I was, was just... having a was having a small problem with a uh, with exposure, but that's easily fixed in editing. So it wasn't. It's not even really a problem. It's more of just because I, I learned on the camera because I figured this out about halfway through Saturday um, that if I'm switching from video to photo, switching from video really fucks the exposure on the photos. And I don't know why. This is like I'll have the exposure set for the photos. And I'll be taking really good photos. I will switch it to video. And I think it readjusts the exposure. And so when I go switch back to photo, it's like really blown out. And so if I don't readjust everything, I'll just have these really like whitewashed blown out photos. And I don't 
know why that happens, but I learned about halfway through Saturday that if I'm switching back and forth, I need to constantly adjust the exposure, which is annoying, but I guess it's kind of part of what was going on with the camera. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Damn. But um, other than that, though, my these are probably the best photos I've taken. It's like that's... That's the one good thing about doing this every year and also getting the more practice in at Kansas and Talladega is that usually I only do this twice a year. I only do, just do both Vegas races, but we did the, we did Phoenix championship last year. We got to do Kansas with and Talladega with Howie DeSavino this year. And so that's some added on races. We got to learn a lot for our own stuff as well as help out some really cool people. And so when we went back to Vegas, it very much was I can take everything I learned during those other events and kind of apply it and everything I learned through the years. And so, like, I think this Vegas batch that I just did is easily, like, the best quality photos I've taken. And that's really good signs of growth on, on my end as a photographer as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like it really helped us out. Um, I think, like, you, you said it right there. It's, like, with, with Vegas... Um, it, it it was like a long delay because like like you said if you're just going to do Vegas like twice a year, it kind of takes you out of like your rhythm because you're trying to get back into that, you know okay I need to get into this style of shooting, um, compared to you know kind of doing it on a more, um, common common uh, ice more more frequently, um, because I know like when I did Vegas. And I think after that, I did Phoenix, and then it, that was pretty much it. And then I had, like, a long gap between Phoenix, and I think I did Charlotte next. Yeah. Um, that one, it kind of took me a little bit to get used to that. And it, I don't know, because, like, Friday, it was just, like, you know, a lot of mistakes were, were made during that day, because I was just trying to figure out, like, what to, what to do. <laughs> yeah, because um, that... That's why I like doing the practice sessions and the qualifying sessions. Not necessarily because I want to get good for those <clears throat> sessions, but I use them as my personal practice session because it's like they're out there practicing. I'm out here practicing because I need to like get back in the rhythm of how my arm needs to be positioned to do my panning shots, um, how fast or how slow do I need to move my arms and stuff to keep the camera from shaking when I'm doing my panning shots on photos and stuff. And so like a lot of the photos I get on Fridays during practice and qualifying sessions, usually they're just shit photos because it's me getting back in the rhythm. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna, I, I was really proud from today, like, this weekend. It was really great. Um, but yeah, it's like you said, like, you know, doing Kansas and Talladega, it's, uh, it's definitely helped out a lot. Like, as far as, like, you know, getting, like, that experience, you know, trying to try new things, seeing what works, what doesn't. Um, even like the catch fence, like I, I, Kansas, like was like the first time I ever sh shot through a catch fence, and I, I'm not gonna lie, it was like really sketchy. It's terrifying. Like, it's scary. Yeah, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, but it's like it's it's kind of terrifying because you're just like right up against them. And then yeah, um, I, I told you how to plant your feet, and you didn't listen to me, and you almost blew yourself over at Kansas. <laughs> like I yeah. told you, you gotta have your feet positioned a certain way if you're gonna do that, and you were like. Okay, and then you went over and didn't do it, and I watched you almost fall on your ass right into one of the photos. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, and it's funny because like, I look at some people that I follow too that like that do NASCAR photography, and it's like, I saw them at the track, and they're, they're just like, you know, it they do this on a weekly basis, and they know what to do, and it's like, you know, I'm trying to be like, oh, like let me try to copy what they're doing, but. You gotta uh, find your own rhythm, though. Is the thing because yeah, like everyone has the their own style. <clears throat> yeah, everybody has their own style, and I think Vegas, like you, I kind of found my style. Like I kind of found what works best with me, um, as far as like doing fence shots, um, or just like regular on track footage or film, whatever. Um, but yeah, it it really helped out a lot doing all those races. Oh, yeah, because, like, I definitely found my, like, not even, like, my shooting style, but, like, and the kind of photos I like doing. But also just editing-wise, I think I've really come into the style of editing that I like doing all my photos. So it's, like, you'll notice, like, if you scroll through my motorsports photos, they've changed slightly through the years. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot on my Instagram that I haven't posted. Like, I, I, I had the drive failure, and so, like, there's some photos I just can't get back. But from the photos I did have, I do still have from, like, 2018, 2019, and, like, earlier years the the style of editing that i did on my photos has drastically changed and i feel like the style i'm at now feels like a style i will probably <coughs> stick with because it's like 
I'm I'm more of like a darker photographer. I don't know why. I don't like bright photos. They just they just they just. I don't yeah. like it too bright. I there's some photos where like I try to make it like very. Um, I don't know. It's, I like the sh- I like the shadow shots. Like, yeah, because that's what I'm of, getting. There's one I took of Weatherman off of turn two, and it's like a shadow shot. Like you can see him like driving through like the uh, the shadows from all like the signs, and yeah. it was really nice. I like shots like that. It looks really clean. But there's shots that I've taken like the. Um, I think there was one with Chase Elliott. Uh, not, it's not actually Elliott, but it's his car, like during the pre-race, where it has all the cars lined up. Yeah, and it's a really clean shot. Like it's it's during the during the day. It's it's not like ridiculously bright, but it's it's good enough to kind of, you know, make it shine a little. Yeah, because um, because what I'm doing is I think that's also why I really like that turn too, is because I like the different like, um color balances and the the shadow dynamics and stuff so it's like there's some pictures that i posted on my instagram that i just don't really like that much but i post them because they're good photos but i'm just like there's a there's one shot particularly that i posted let me see if i can find it um <clears throat> i don't know what it is i i can't i can't really pinpoint what it is that i don't like about the photo but on my xfinity series set josh barry in victory lane where it's like the full car sitting in victory lane I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the coloring shade on the car. I don't know if it's the fact that there's a lot of empty space in the foreground. Mm-hmm. But I that is like I didn't have a photo that I liked, and I wanted to use a picture of Josh Berry in Victory Lane because you know he won the race. I kind of felt like I had to, but I posted that one because I felt like it was the best one that I had. But at the same time, I'm not a huge fan of it. I, it it feels. I don't know. I guess the foreground just feels empty to me. I probably should have panned up and zoomed in a little bit to get more of that fill because that's that's the kind of photos I like. I'm learning that I really like full photos. I don't like a lot of empty space. And so when I have empty space, I feel like I missed the shot, which is why I'm such a huge fan of like the Justin Allgaier shot that I took or like the um the couple that I got a Haley Deegan or the field. It's like I like full shots because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of dynamic happening. I can play with the colors and the balancing of the lighting and stuff. So it's like those are the photos I like shooting. And so I don't really post a lot of the <clears throat> wide shot photos that I take because I don't like the empty space. Just I don't like it. <laughs> so. Yeah, I am, I'm the same way. Like I don't like having a lot of open space. Like there are some photos. I, it depends. Like if I'm doing like there's one I took of Ryan Vargas. Where like, like it shows his car, but you can see like the back of the, the wall. It's not too bad, but like shots, I like shots like you said where it's like kind of close up to where you can see, I love see everything. Shots. Yeah, even headshots too. Like I want to zoom in. I don't want. I don't want to have too much, outer image. I want to be like more zoomed in on the main focus. Yeah. Like it also depends on what I'm shooting. It's like obviously I can kind of change my mindset depending on what I'm shooting. But if I'm shooting like action shots and stuff if it's an establishing shot obviously it has to be wider so the audience can be like oh this is where we are this is what's happening but if it's an action shot i love those like tight shots or like even that's why i like the rest shooting the restarts too because then i can get a wide shot but it still has a lot enough going on that i can see that it's a full photo because I, yeah. I have a i have a lot a lot of pictures on my drive right now where i was shooting down the front stretch but my camera didn't have the zoom that i wanted and so there's a lot of empty space. I'm just like, boo. I'm like, it, it could be a good photo. Like, they're good photos. But in my brain, the way I like to edit things and the, just the photos that I like taking, I'm just like, this is a bad photo because there's too much empty space. It's not a bad photo. It's just not my style. <laughs> so. Yeah. Like, I would say, like, my the like video um, part of me has gotten a lot better. Because I know, like, looking at, like, the Vegas, uh, looking at all the Vegas film, like, it just looks very shaky all over the place it kind of focuses a little bit but it's very shaky um compared to like this time it's like very you know calm very smooth it's a little bit shaky but it's kind of hard to well it's be very impossible smooth. to not have shake when the cars are blasting by you that looking, yeah that shockwave of air is really going to push you around anyway <clears throat> oh yeah but I, i'm kind of proud of that like it's a lot better than than what it was early this year there's a I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna drop it in the video here if I can find it. Um, but I took a video. I don't know what was going on. 
because it wasn't really that it was breezy but it wasn't really windy on saturday but there's a there's a video shot i was trying to take for the for the news segment of just like the cars coming by i, I think it was partially because i was zoomed in all the way and so you know the further in you zoom the shakier it's going to be just because it's, it's just more unstable but yeah. I think the wind from the cars was pushing me around too much, or I was just trying to adjust my shot. But I have like a I have like a six second video that just makes me nauseous because of how shaky the camera is. It's just like it's not even like mildly shaky where it's like, oh, the cars are pushing the camera. It looks like somebody's like shaking my shoulders and the camera is <laughs> jolting around. It's like it's the worst thing I think I've ever shot in my life. And I was looking at that video and I was like, what in the world was going on here? Like I don't even know what was <laughs> happening in that moment. <laughs> I'm just like, it's like somebody <laughs> punched me in the face, and I was just like. <laughs> You're just like fucking like just trying to stay conscious. Yeah, that's what the video looks like. I'm just like, what is this? And so if I can find it, I'm gonna put it in here so you guys know what I'm talking about. But it's, it's, it's actually comical how bad it is. <laughs> oh god. I mean, but uh, I guess that's just part of how it goes. I'm, you, you, you're gonna miss more shots than you actually get. Is what I'm learning with racing photography. Yeah, and it's just how it is. Like you're gonna miss it, but you know. Just that's just is how it is. Can't be perfect. No, I, I don't know if you heard me, but when we were shooting up in turn four, um, when the field came by after one of the later restarts, um, I think I turned to you and said, I just missed all of those shots <laughs> because I I had got my pan down, but I had mistimed it. Uh huh. And what I did was I realized I had mistimed my pan. And so I like panicked and tried to adjust and I just missed everything. Oh, it's like it, it's that. it's like I was shooting between cars and I was just getting I was just getting bumpers and walls and stuff. And so like there's a there's a there's a burst of like 30 photos where I missed every there's not a single car full car in frame. It's all just like front and rear bumpers in the wall because I had missed time to my pan. They're beautiful pictures. They're like they're crystal clear. They're in focus, but not a single car is actually in the frame because I had missed time to the pan. <laughs> so. Yeah, I've had that happen before. I'm just like I panic and I try to try to make up for it but it just looks bad yeah no i mean it's just like i was it was funny how bad it was too because I, I think that's when i turned to you and said i just missed all of them i got them the second time around though it's like i got some good shots the second time around but that first time around i was like damn i can't believe i dropped the ball on this <laughs> yeah that's just how it is yeah that's just how it be sometimes but you know still still left with some beautiful shots that i'm really proud of but um now in terms of like the actual event. I want to touch on this because I thought it was really funny. Actually, hold on. Should I wait? Do we? Let, I'm gonna wait on that. I'm gonna put a pin in that really fast. Actually, let's talk about the Xfinity race really fast. The, the one downside to actually shooting the events is that you don't really get to watch the race as intensely as you would on like TV or in yeah. the grandstands, and so we we miss a lot of things. But from from what I gathered from the Xfinity race, it was not as chaotic as I thought it was gonna be because usually these Vegas races in any division are just absolute madhouses and it was actually an incredibly clean race with a lot of good racing yeah it's actually pretty good um very tame i mean i don't think there was a lot of crashes there weren't if any anything, crashes like, no no like i think the, the only natural caution was for brandon jones's half spin and nascar through the entertainment yellow oh yeah um i think i think um the four car who was driving the four this week oh that was bailey was it Bailey? Okay, because I, I did notice when we were shooting in one and two, I was like, that four car is going to crash somebody because he came over the bumps, and that thing got really squirrely. And then I noticed later <clears> in the race, when we were more toward the front stretch, he drove by, and the, the rear bumper was, like, taped up and crooked. So I think at some point he had gotten loose and bapped the wall, but nobody really yeah, crashed. Yeah, I did see that. Um, but, yeah, I was... Uh... I there was one point I don't think it was in two I was taking pictures, but I saw someone get really squirrely and I was like, oh shit, he's gonna spin out right in front it of me. It was probably the four car because coming over the bumps, that man was all over the place. Yeah. No, it was it was kind of sketchy. I was like, oh no. This that Matt Jaskill almost took out John Hunter Nemechek. I don't know if TV caught that, but there was a point in time where um. I think Matt did the same thing the four car was doing. I think he just hit the bump wrong, and that the back end just stepped out. He went sliding up the racetrack. I thought he was going to take out Nemechek because they made contact. Like he actually hit Nemechek, and they both went a little bit sideways, but he didn't hit him hard enough to spit him. He just kind of tapped him. They both got a little bit squirrely, but they continued on. So I, I don't know if TV caught that, but that was a <laughs> that was a bit of a panic moment for everybody involved. So. Yeah. 
<coughs> um, yeah, but I mean, it was pretty good. I mean, I, I yeah, like I said, we didn't really get to catch much because we were kind of walking around. I know we took a little bit of a break, like towards the end. I think we went back out like with like thirty laps to go. But, yeah, I think it was like twenty, twenty-five to go, something like that. Might have even been less. It might have even been closer to fifteen to go. It was pretty late. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty late, and then uh, we ended up going back out, and yeah, that was it. Yeah, pretty, um, I don't want to say uneventful. I mean, it was uneventful in terms of, like, from what we saw, but from TV and some clips I did see, there was a lot of, like, good racing going on. So, like, it wasn't a bad race by any means. We just, you know, work in the events. It's You kind of miss a lot, so. Yeah. But, yeah, that was pretty good. It was fun. And uh, Haley Deegan... 13th in her debut, which I was not expecting. I was not ready for her to run third. I, I was expecting her to do good. Like, I think I told you this beforehand. I think I, I talked to you about this on like Thursday or Friday. No, it might have even been Wednesday. It was like, I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday. I was talking to you and I was saying, like, I'm, I was kind of hoping, I was wondering if it was going to be a scenario where she just runs the cars better than the trucks because of how vastly different they are. And yeah. by damn it, I was right. I was not ready for her to do that well in the Xfinity car. Oh yeah, no, she did really well. Um, it's uh, <coughs> excuse me, she she was running up there for like, even like during qualifying too. She ran up there for a, for a little bit. Um, oh my God. I think her initial qualifying lap put her second. <coughs> What's that? Her her initial qualifying lap, she was second fastest when she went out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. she was fast. Yeah, she knew like, what she was doing. Oh yeah. She was a uh, she was on a roll, um, but I mean a lot of people were saying like they weren't expecting much, but she kind of proved them wrong because she kind of she, she ran pretty well, and I think a lot of people were saying that uh, you know the truck series shouldn't be listed as like a a development series anymore. You know, maybe not because there's a lot of drivers who just absolutely shit their pants in the truck series, and they got, then they hop in an Xfinity car and they do just fantastic. And like, I I know I don't know for a fact, but I I'm pretty sure at some point earlier this season, in a podcast, I mentioned that Haley Deegan wasn't ready for Xfinity or Cup or anything. Because I think I think a w- months ago people were toying with the idea of Haley Deegan going to Xfinity, and I'm pretty sure at some point I was like, I don't know if she's ready because she still hasn't you know, run super well in trucks and stuff. Um, I can eat my words there. Um, I, I no longer think that she isn't ready for Xfinity because she went and blew everybody away with a 13th place finish. And so honestly, if they were to pull her out of a truck and put her in an Xfinity car in the next season or two, I wouldn't be opposed to that because she went out and proved to me that she does a lot better behind the car, the wheel of a car than she does behind a truck. And I think it's just because they are two vastly different vehicles, just the way they're built, the way they race, the way they handle and everything. It's like, it's it's almost impossible to compare a truck to an Xfinity car just because of how different they are. And so it, it does make sense that somebody would do better in one or the other. It's like, because we've also seen the opposite. We've seen drivers who have done fantastic in the trucks, gone into the but Xfinity series, and, just, and do terrible. Prime <laughs> so, example, uh, Sheldon Creed. Johnny Sauter, Matt Crafton. Johnny Sauter. Other drivers who have been f- truck series champions wouldn't went up to what was in the Bush series and didn't do jack shit. So, it's it's hard it's hard to really judge somebody based on their solely sole performance in one division. I feel like you got to put them in both to see how they do. Yeah, but it's just uh, it's crazy. I, I I honestly don't think it should be listed as uh, a development. I mean, it can be, but I wouldn't take it too too seriously. You know, I mean, I love just... the truck series, but it's hard to label it for what it is because of how just different i i i've heard other rumblings that nascar is trying to get rid of the truck series i don't want that either like i love the truck series no. i, I, I mean, love the again, diversity in it there's some drivers that are good in trucks and then good at xfinity like john hunter um kyle bush uh who else <clears throat> uh, eric jones Chris, christopher bell yeah you know, casey kane for a long time when he went went down there and did stuff, Casey Kane was really good in all those divisions. Yeah, it's like I mean I wouldn't. I get I mean yeah. There's some like I said. There's some people that are you know just good with just cars. Like it just depends on what they're comfortable with. 
you know, it, it looks like Haley's because here's the other thing: when Haley was running the K and N series, she has K and M series wins. I think she has an Arca win too. So it's like we know she can drive a race car. Uh, I don't think she has an Arca win yet. She doesn't have an Arca win. Okay, well, she definitely has K and N wins, but yeah. um, for sure, because I have one of the diecasts, so you can't call me crazy because I literally own no, a Haley I think Deacon she win diecast. No, I think no, she doesn't. Two or two. three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two or three. Dev, I know for sure she has two. I don't know about the third one, but she she no, for a hundred percent she has two. But um, anyway, that's not the point. The point is we know she can drive a race car, and so when she went into the choke series and fell on her face, it was really surprising for a lot of people. And so the fact that she's able to climb out of a truck, get an Xfinity car, and place thirteenth in her debut, tells me that she can drive a race car. It's maybe the truck series just isn't her home. Yeah. And that's okay. No, that's fine because it's it's like I stated before. You know, you're you can be good in both, but sometimes you're just good in one thing over the other. It's like it's like I said with Johnny Sutter, and Matt Crafton earlier. It's like they're amazing truck drivers, but they didn't do jack shit when they got into a Bush Series car. Yeah, it's the same no. thing with Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson was horrendous in the Bush Series. People were calling him a Bush Series bust. They're like, oh, he'll never make it in Cup. Man's a seven-time Cup Series champion now. It like it just it just depends on what you're comfortable driving because of how different all these divisions are. Yeah, same thing with Jeff Gordon. He only had two wins. That's true. Jeff Gordon's another example of somebody who didn't do jack shit in the Bush Series. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you can't can't just like be like you know. Or you can be Kyle Bush and just shit stomp whatever you get in. Yeah, you could be that. <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing too. It's like it, it it's just like it's so hard. Everything's so more competitive now. You can't just like uh. You can't just um. What was I gonna say? You can't just be like you know okay and then move up. Some people are just like, oh, you're not good here. You're not good enough to move up. I here's my new proposal. I feel <clears throat> like new development drivers should get a couple of years in trucks just so they can get used to how NASCAR operates. Because, you know, mm-hmm. they're shorter races, but they all have the same rules and stuff. So it's like, I feel like if you're bringing in a development driver, bop them in in trucks so they can get adjusted to NASCAR's rules, regulations, how the races are run, all that fun jazz. Um, whether they do good or not, just, you know, depends on what they're comfortable with driving. After maybe like one or two years in trucks where they're comfortable with how everything works, then maybe stick them in an Xfinity car and use that as their like true development programs. I feel like what a lot of people are saying online is probably true. The Xfinity series probably is just a better development series for drivers just because the, just the level of competition there is insane with the Xfinity drivers and stuff with the current batch. But like the trucks Xfinity are so vastly different. It's hard to judge them. And so I feel like the truck series (laughs) is a good introductory into NASCAR, whereas the Xfinity should be more of the development of that driver. Yeah. Develop into that and then move up to, to and then, Try to move up to cup. Yeah, I feel like that might work better. It's just use the truck says, hey, here's your introduction to NASCAR. Welcome to the shit show. Um, after a couple of years here and you're used to how everything works, we'll put you in an Xfinity car and see if you actually belong here or not. Which kind of, I mean, I guess ARCA could be like the the pre-intro, I guess. I guess that works too, but they kind of have different, regu- they, they run very different. They have a very different rule set and everything from NASCAR, whereas... That's that's why I'm thinking maybe trucks would be better for that because Wells Arca would be a good introductory. They run on a completely different rule set on how those races are operated and everything. Yeah, because I don't. I'm Do you do you honestly think that they're gonna last? The Arca series. Yeah. In my 100 percent just brutal honest opinion, I am not entirely sure how much longer the Arca series will be around just because it has lost a lot of popularity over the couple of years and it's yeah. just like the field isn't as competitive as it used to be so it's like i feel like they're still going to be around for a while just because a division like arca doesn't just disappear overnight no but, but it takes I, time. I it takes time but i feel like we're sl- we're seeing the slow burnout of the arca series unfortunately as much as i hate to say it and as much <laughs> as it hurts me to say it um unless they change something or they figure something out i don't think the Arca Division is going to be around when I'm 40. <laughs> yeah, no. I think it's going to be uh long And gone. just for reference, I'm 23 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think it's going to last very long. And it sucks to say because, like, I don't know. Like, when you look at it now, it's just, like, it's not what it used to be. 
And I think ten years it, ago, Arcus Years was must watch TV. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> but now it's like nobody cares. Nobody cares to kind of tune in anymore. It's just whatever. Um, like, uh, I was gonna say. Um, you know, like, it's like back then, it's like you know everybody would would try to qualify for those races, and now nobody cares. It's just it's uh it's in the past. Oh my god! And they have I, I what like fifty something cars show up to try to make an ARCA race, and now the field is like what? I think the last time I watched an ARCA race, there were like twenty three cars that showed up. Yeah, and then like you know, I think with all like, I think a lot of it has to do with like the the newer bodies, like the Gen Six. Yeah, they're running the, they're running like a, a weird version of the Gen Six cars. <clears throat> yeah, like they're running that. A, a different model compared to they, they ran like the Gen Four. They were, but I mean, it's they had to because just for the safety of that car, it was just terrible. Yeah, that car was. I mean, it so wasn't the unsafe. safest car ever. Yeah, it was. It was so bad. The thing like, crumpled was, like a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, you hit the wall, and like your your chances of getting a concussion is like a lot higher. Well, I don't know about that because it's like the one good thing about the Gen 4 car is that the amount of crumple it gave actually did um, distribute a lot of the energy through the car more than the driver. But it's more the fact that I think I've said this before on this podcast where it's just like the Gen 4 and the Gen 7 is like the split between what the Gen 6 car was. It's like the Gen 4 was too much crumple, whereas the Gen 7 is not enough crumple because it's like the crumple is good, but too much crumple isn't good. And I feel like the Gen 4 was too much crumple. Yeah. Because it's like, it's great, you're dissipating all that energy, but at the same time, it's like, if you crumple too much and all your crunch zones are gone, um, at some point, the energy is going to come back to the driver, and that's where other that's where drivers were, like, breaking arms and legs and stuff, was because, like, shit would come through the driver's compartment and, like, hurt drivers in other ways. So it's like, after the introduction of the safer barriers, whereas concussions kind of started going down more, we were still seeing the same other injuries where, like, we were seeing wrist sprains and broken legs and shit like that, because it's like... Too much crumple will still do that. <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah, it's just uh, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, we but. really went off the rails on this one. We went from Haley Deegan <coughs> to the death of the Arca Sears. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Arca. Yeah. So to to get us back on track, um, do you have any notes on Xfinity or nah? Uh no. Nope. Okay. So, skedaddling on into trucks, <coughs> trucks, cup. Why did I say trucks? I, <coughs> I have me. too much on my mind right now. So, sk- skedaddling on over into the the wonderful cup series now. Before we even series. get to the yeah the cuppy cars. <laughs> Before we even get into the cuppy cars, I just want to say, uh, Sunday before the race when the drivers were doing the red carpet walk, um. The those the fans two were girls hilarious. Those yeah no I got I was just on the red carpet just trying to take my photos and my B roll shots for the news and um the two girls I was parked next to were providing some amazing entertainment for me just just top tier entertainment from they were funny. <laughs> like I, I want to hear your story first because you had a really funny story from where you were parked because you were on the other side of the red carpet. Oh, you were like I don't know if it's appropriate. <laughs> It's funny. You don't have to, like, <laughs> name drop anybody, but it was a funny story. Um, if you, if you so, don't want okay. to tell it, you don't have so, to. But. And, okay, I'll, I'll kind of talk about it. So, um, okay. I'm not, I'm not, for, I hope you don't force me to say were, anything, but if you want to, you can. Yeah, Michael and I were uh, just, uh, like you said, chilling at the red carpet, and there happened to be a particular popular driver that they were trying to ch- like, call for. You know, you know how fans are like, you know, they're trying to call their yeah. favorite driver and uh, she ch- kept trying to call his name. So I just literally was just like screaming his name, trying to get his attention. And uh, he wouldn't answer. He was just kind of like, you know, signing, he, he was signing autographs from other fans. But then he actually, I don't, I don't know if he did or not, but he just kind of kept walking away. And uh, once they like kn- knew that he wasn't coming back. One of the kids said, F that guy. She said, fuck that guy. I'm not his fan any- fan anymore. 
And I just start like laughing because it's just so hilarious hearing a kid just say that. Yeah, the... <laughs> <laughs> in in that driver's defense, though, there's there's a lot happening, and we were also at the end of the gate, like we were at the very end of the red carpet. So it's like at that point, um, it's time to go. I, it, yeah, it is time to go at that point. So it's like, as a fan, I understand being disappointed, missing out on the on the autograph, but at the same time, you're at like the end of the gate. You're like the last one in line, and so like right before the gate, where they're being, where the drivers are also they're also being pushed out the door because they have to get to the grid to do all their other media things. And so like these drivers are being shuffled along anyway. And so if you're at the end of the line, your chances of getting an autograph are pretty low anyway, yeah. rather than if you're at the, the beginning of the line or in the middle where if they're actively trying to get down the line, because the further they get to the end, the more likely they are to get shuffled to, to get like funneled toward the middle and out the gate. Cause that's what was happening with a lot of drivers. They would sign autographs all the way down the line and then they would kind of get to where we were at the end of the line and they would kind of get their PR person or whoever was with them would kind of like shuffle them toward the middle of the carpet and squeeze them out the gate through all the security and stuff. And so like a lot of fans down where we were just didn't get autographs because they just happened to be in a very unfortunate spot of where, how the gates were placed and everything. <coughs> but <laughs> the girls next to me, they could have been any older than like, I think the oldest one was, if I had to guess was probably like 10, maybe 11. Like they were very young very enthusiastic girls they were actually pretty funny but um i don't know how new to the sport they were but they didn't recognize a lot of the drivers by their faces but they they knew who the drivers were but they didn't fully recognize them by the faces and so a lot of the drivers were coming down and they would kind of like it would be like who's that who's that who's that and so i would answer them i was kind of helping them out because i knew they were trying to get um one of them had this shirt they were trying to get all the drivers to sign and so as the drivers were coming down the red carpet they were like oh who's that who's that and I'd be like, oh, you know, that's Ty Dillon, or that's Corey LaJoy, or that's this person, or that's that person. And it was really funny to me, because they would, they would ask me who drivers were. I would tell them, and they would immediately start screaming that driver's name. And some of them came over, some of them <laughs> didn't, just because of how loud it was. But it was really funny to me that, um, I don't know, just the, just the way it was. I can't really recreate it, just because it was one of those things where like, you kind of had to be there, because it was just really, it was my entertainment to just... I see them get a driver autograph, then immediately turn to me and go, "Who's this? Who's this guy coming down? Like, who's that?" <laughs> just like, I'm just helping them. I'm just helping them get autographs. I just thought it was really funny. Yeah. And so I hope they uh, had a wonderful day. That was funny. I will say this: Ty Dillon, very wholesome man. <coughs> he is a very wholesome man. He's, He's very a very funny. wholesome man. He he very was sweet. like that was that was one of the drivers I helped because they were like, "Oh, who's that?" And I was like, "Oh, that's that's Ty Dillon." And so they obviously they started screaming Ty's name, and. As Ty got closer to us, one of the girls goes, Ty, will you sign my shirt? And Ty just very calmly turns around and he goes, of course I'll sign your shirt. And he just walks over and he's just like talking to him. He's asking how old they are and how their day is going. Is he signing the shirt? And he tells him to have a good day and walks off. And I was like, that, that's the wholesome content I signed up for. I am now a Ty Dillon stan. <laughs> <laughs> I was very indifferent about him before just because I just didn't. I don't. I just don't follow him very. Yeah, I, I just don't follow him very closely. It's like I know he's a driver and exists, and I've never heard anything bad about him. But I've also just never. He's also just never done anything to like really pop out and impress me. And so I've always just been neutral on Ty Dillon. But you know, after seeing that fan interaction, and and I know it wasn't just for the camera either, because it's like I heard him talking to fans as he was coming down the line, and even when he walked past me. Um, he was signing autographs, and I was hearing him talk to those fans behind me as well when, when where no one was shooting. And so that that just tells me that he's just a very stand-up, wholesome guy. And so I'm just like, you know what? After witnessing that, I'm now a Ty Dillon stand. I have moved my needle out of the neutral zone. <laughs> so you just went ding. Yep. Congratulations, Ty Dillon. I am now a stand. <laughs> Congratulations, Ty Dillon. Welcome to the Final Four. Yeah, but welcome, welcome to Michael's Final Four. <laughs> You're a champion in my heart. You're a champion in my heart, bud. Yeah, and Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy also a very nice human being. Yeah, he is. Yeah, there's another driver who low-key kind of pissed me off that I, I'm not going to name drop him. You know who I'm talking about. But just, just the way he handled the fan interactions, I was just like, bro, really? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, very, uh, yeah. Not yeah. very nice. We're, we're going to brush past that one because I don't want yeah. to be too brutal because I will be brutal because I was just like, wow, that was uh, that was disappointing for everybody involved. I'm not even I'm not even here for autographs. I'm just here to take your picture, and I'm disappointed in you. 
<laughs> you disappointing. You're for real. But um, we've been rolling for about 45 minutes, so do you think it's about time to address the elephant in the room? Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba Wallace <laughs> and Kyle Larson. Uh, uh, we couldn't end this video without it men- at least mentioning it. Who, who wants to go first, you or me? Uh, I guess I'll go first. Okay. Uh, so, I, the thing is just like, it was very uncalled for. I mean, I hate to say it, I'm a, I'm a huge Bubba supporter. I love the man. You know, I, I'm so glad to see him succeed so much this year. But is it was just uncalled for and i mean it's just really unnecessary to do something like that because you know he's putting uh, you're putting a lot of people in danger in that type of situation um you know you're you're pretty much sending a guy into a turn straight into a wall at that high speed i mean regardless where it's at you're not supposed to do it but you know at vegas you know it's such a hot fast paced track and you know, you don't know what's gonna happen, and then to set him in the wall like that, just to, it was just uh, <clears throat> sorry, it's just yeah, uncalled for. You know, it's it's not it's not right. It's it wasn't. There's it, that could have been handled so much differently than what he than what he did. Um, you know, it was just uncalled for, and not only that, but it took you know Christopher Bell out of the championship. Not not completely out of it. Well, but, we don't know, you know if he's out of the championship. It would definitely put him in a big ass hole, but he's not. Yeah, out of it. it put him in a really bad situation because now he's pretty much in a must win situation. Because if you look at it now, it's like he's he's so far back in the points. That he he pretty much finished dead last, and he he only got one stage to get stage points, and then that's it. Oh, where did he finish in that stage? Even I don't even know. I think. Um. Did he get stage points even? Let me see. Uh, there's a way to check that. But um, something I realized while I was writing my article for the news thing, um, Christopher Bell was the only playoff driver to not finish the race on Sunday. So he's the only playoff driver that really had yeah, only problems one. that took him out. The only one, which which makes that wreck and just compounds it. Because if he had wrecked and then other playoff drivers had issues, it probably would have evened itself out he just finished. a little bit. 34th. Yeah. And then the next one after that is Ryan Blaney in 28th. Yeah. So not not great. But my thing is, we, we all jumped host of ours ass for doing it. And I'm I'm going to jump Wallace's ass. Because it's like, it's like you said. I like Bubba Wallace. I'm a fan of Bubba Wallace. But I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are, what the situation is, or how mad you are. You do not, under any circumstances, right hook anybody at any track. Like it could have been Martinsville. Like, I don't care. Like you don't right hook somebody head on to the wall like that, especially knowing the safety concerns around the Gen Seven car. Like I just, in my book, completely uncalled for. And just like you said, completely uncalled for. It's like I'm not even mad about like. The fight that happened on the, it wasn't even. I don't really want to call it a fight because it wasn't a fight. I'm not even really. I'm not even mad about the shoving match because it's like it's that part to me was fine. That part to me was fine. It's like you're mad. You want to go push the guy around or whatever. Like he didn't. I mean, it was kind of aggressive, but like that's part of just how NASCAR racing is. That's part of the advertising. It's like the drivers will beat the drivers and they will NASCAR will let them fight it out as long as it doesn't get out of hand. So it's like I'm not upset that he got out of the car and pushed Kyle Larson around because he was mad. I'm mad because he right hooked Larson hit onto the wall in the middle of traffic down the straightaway at Las Vegas and took out a championship. That's what I'm mad about. That's what's uncalled for. Like if he had waited till like if he had just if he had gone into like turn one and two and give and gave him the hey I don't appreciate that shove up into the wall that would I would have been fine with that too. It's like hey you put me in the wall so I'm gonna go into turn one and shove you up the track a little bit. That's just racing. That's just how NASCAR is. Even after the race, if he had come up to Larson after the race and started pushing him around. That's fine. That's just how NASCAR racing is. But to right hook somebody at that speed into traffic is just completely uncalled for. It's stupid. Like I'm gonna say it. It's it's stupid. It is stupid. It's just uncalled for. 
And yeah. I won't be surprised if there's a, a suspension for that. And it's just like, you know, you've seen it a lot. You've seen it, like, in Texas with William Byron. I mean, his, his wasn't as bad, but he still intentionally spun him out. And it's like... I forgot about that. I'll have to go back and look at that replay. Yeah, but it's and like, then Noel Gregson, too. He got he didn't get a race suspension, but he got a, a big, hefty fine and then lost a lot of points. So like, I, I feel like I NASCAR just needs to start if, suspending you know, people for this because it's going to get out of hand. It's like there's there is a clip I've seen resurface lately. Remember that short track accident from earlier this year in like the late model yeah. truck series where oh, this yeah, guy yeah, right so hooked the guy I, and I, I flipped the truck too. into the fence? Yeah, it's just like that's one of those things. It's like that's why you don't right hook people down the straight away. It's like obviously it's a different division, it's a different set of circumstances, but the point still stands. It's like you don't right hook people. In at in any racetrack at any speed, like it doesn't matter because you don't know where that car is going to go, you don't know how they're going to hit, and it could have been a lot worse. Let's let's say let's say Christopher Bell wasn't there. Let's say Christopher Bell just either wasn't there on the track or he got by. The way Larson was spinning would have been Christopher. Really, it would have been it would have been a lot worse than it was because Christopher Bell kind of broke that wreck for him a little bit. He still hit really hard on the driver's side door, but the way he was spinning up the track. We know where the danger spot is on this car, and that car was spinning toward the danger zone on the car, and so he could have actually really hurt Larson the way these cars are. And so it's like I'm saying, if you're mad at the guy, just go down and turn one and shove him up the track. Like whatever, that's that's you know, I'm mad at you because you put me in the wall, so I'm gonna shove you up the track. Don't ride with the guy. Yeah, I can't. Don't do that. that just pisses me off. I can't. I don't care. It's like I'm all about Robina's racing. Like it's it's exciting to watch drivers bounce off each other and. <laughs> And, and race really hard, but I hate seeing things like that because even in like an Xfinity car or a truck or, or something that is proven to be super safe, you don't right hook people. You just you don't do it. It's not safe for anybody involved. It's uncalled for. It's stupid. It's it's the list goes on about how bad it is to right hook people on a racetrack. Yeah, and then Noah Gregson. Yeah, like I said, Noah Gregson got a thirty point penalty for that. wasn't as bad. wasn't as fast, but he still lost 30 points, um, got a big, big hefty fine, but faced no suspension. Because didn't they also our... <laughs> penalize Hosevar for it when he did it? Yeah, I think they did. But the thing is, like, I think this time around, they they ha- I think he's going to have to face his uh, suspension. Like, NASCAR's going to do something. Because I forgot about the Gregson one. I remembered the Hosevar one, but if Gregson did it, that's, that's three right hooks this season. Yeah. And it's so, like, like I've, we got to start doing something because this is good. If it, if we normalize it, it's going to get worse. Yeah. I, and I wouldn't be surprised if they give him a big, hefty points loss, too. Yeah. So, it's like, as, as much as I like Bubba Wallace, and I've been a Bubba Wallace fan since he was racing trucks, um, I would not be opposed to, like, a one or two race suspension because of this. Because it's like, it's this is ridiculous. Like, you don't. It's like yeah. I, I like I said earlier. I'm gonna bring out the broken record and just say, if he had waited till after the race and shoved Larson around, that would have been fine. If he had gone into turn one and shoved him up the track, that would have been fine. If if he had even just returned the favor back in the next corner and put him back and just put him in the wall, just just to you know tit for a tat, I would have been fine with that. But to right hook the man, <laughs> no, don't nah. Yeah, don't do that. That's not cool. Yeah. So I I will not be surprised <laughs> if if NASCAR comes down with a a big old hefty fine, which actually brings me into my other segue. Um, they've already used it in advertising campaigns, and that also makes me really That's... uncomfortable. I also don't like that either. Yeah, like like the one we saw earlier for our, for next seat, next race in Vegas. Oh yeah, we uh, knew your like tickets that. for round two. I'm like, bro, delete that shit now. <laughs> Take it down. <laughs> Take it down. It's not 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 cool. No, I don't like that one bit. No, I don't like that either. Like that's just really in bad taste. And like the other thing is something else that really, really rubbed me the wrong way. It was even after the cup race. If you noticed a lot of the articles, they were like. It was like, you know, Christopher Bell Championship Vacations, and it was a picture of Bob Wallace and the Kyle Larson incident. I'm just like, if you're going to post the caption being Christopher Bell, use a picture post of Christopher Bell. Post a picture Bell. of Christopher Bell. <laughs> Don't go fishing <laughs> like that. Like, what the hell, man? Yeah. No. They, they know what they're doing. No, they know what they're doing, and that's what makes me mildly uncomfortable, is that they're they're using it for their headlining stuff. And it's just like, 
it's a, it was a big incident and it was definitely something that needs to be talked about and should be covered in like headlining news and stuff but if you're gonna cover other things around it don't use that picture like yeah. use that picture for its purpose that's what i was taught when i went through all my editing stuff and when i was interning at news stations i was the way i was taught was um if you're gonna use a picture use it with purpose and so to write to have an article listed as hey this is what happened to christopher like this is christopher's <laughs> championship implications why are we using a picture of the fight you can use a picture of the crash because the crash is what caused it but why are we showing a picture of the fight <laughs> yeah that had absolutely nothing to do with christopher bill exactly so uh yeah it's so messy so we'll, it's uh, that's a mess but we'll see what happens i mean hopefully they come up with a solution yeah, so at the time we're recording this it is a uh, monday night so obviously nothing is released yet um we might wednesday is penalty day so by wednesday we'll know what they're doing and i'm expecting a fine or something at the very least but i wouldn't be surprised if they suspend him for a race because it's like i said um if we've already had three right hooks this season we need to do something about that just because right hooking anybody is dangerous yeah. Especially right hooking people up into traffic, and so I, I feel like if we're right hooking people, that just should just by default just be a one race suspension. Because it's like, don't don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. It's it's not safe, not right. Yeah, because I I completely forgot about the uh, Gregson one, so I'm going to go find that later today. Or tonight or something. Unless you want to send me a link if you have it already, but I'll figure it out. Uh, you said it was Texas? It was uh, Road America. Road America. Oh, well, that's a road course. Isn't that a little bit different? Yeah, but I mean, you still right hook them. I'd have to. I'd have to see the the replay. I'd have to see to drop my two cents, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna comment it was on with, something. Uh, I'm not I think it was sure one about. of the Alpha Prime cars too. I think it was what. It was with one of the Alpha Prime cars. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'd have to see a replay of what happened before I drop my two cents on that. But um. But other than the the elephant in the room, that now that we've addressed that, uh, Joey Logano is going to go race for a championship. So Yay. he came out of nowhere at the end. I didn't think he was going to win that race. I don't know where he came from exactly. Came out of nowhere. He really did. Like I knew he was up in the field late in the race. I didn't think he was. Um, up enough to win it, though. I think he came from, like, 6th or 7th on that final restart, didn't he? Yeah. He, he was pretty quick, though. I mean, I think if... I think if <coughs> if uh, Kyle was not in the back for that penalty or with the tire falling off, he would have been up there. That's true. Kyle probably also could have won that race if he didn't have the tire fall off either because he came from wherever the hell he restarted and drove his way up into 3rd by the yeah. end of it all. No, I was watching him. He was just like on a on a mission. <laughs> he was probably mad. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> a mad, an angry Kyle Busch is a dangerous Kyle Busch. Mm-hmm. We've seen that yeah. man work some magic when he's mad. When he's mad, he's fast. Oh, he is, and so I think that's what because he had spun. Then I think they had some other kind of issue in the pits, and then the tire fell off, and so that man was just having a whale of a time. And yeah. but he came from the back and drove it home third, and so. I, d I, I think somebody commented if he had had, like, two amount of laps. I don't know if he would have caught Logano in two laps just because of how far ahead Logano was. But if, uh, if the tire – if no, nah, I don't know. Mm, I think the gap was too big for Vegas and how fast it is. I feel like if the tire didn't fall off, he definitely probably could have won that race. But I don't think he would have caught him if he had – I think he needed, like, four or five laps to catch Logano. I don't think he could have done it in, like, two more, like some people were saying. Maybe four. Yeah, like four or five, something like that. I feel like he could probably could have caught him, but yeah. But yeah. He oh, because was... that's another thing that I missed. Did you see that he went after Chastain after the checkered? No. Oh, you missed that. So there was a clip that I saw on Twitter. Um, I think I think it was either the white flag lap or coming to the checkered. Um, Chastain like ran him up the track and put him in the wall. Oh, I saw that, but I didn't see yeah. the. the yeah, and so. And so, um, af after the race, I think this was on the cool down lap coming back to pit road. He like, I think he like ran Ross up the track and was just, like very visibly like, like, Hey bitch, what was that about? <laughs> oh, oh, I thought he did something like after the race. 
Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't in person. It was, like, on the cooldown lap. He, like, he hit the Intimidator button on his race car and just oh. went and, like, gave Perfect him a little, like, year. bump. Yeah. Good old, good old Intimidator button on the on the 18. The KV Dater. Yeah. How many how many races is Ben B. Shore suspended now for that? Because that's the crew chief four. suspension when a tire comes off four race. Oh, that's the rest of the season. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> so, Do we know who the replacement the is? The year. I have no idea. I think uh, they probably haven't <laughs> announced it yet. Because he, he's been suspended before. I think. Uh, uh, what was it? He had a different crew chief for the Clash. Yeah, and so I think it's going to be the Clash crew chief. Whoever that was, I don't know who that was off the top of my head. Yeah. But Kyle was fast in the Clash, so maybe. Maybe he'll have some luck. I don't know. Watch Kyle win the Watch Kyle win the next three races. <laughs> Watch him go back to back to back at at Homestead, uh, Martinsville, and Phoenix. (laughs) Back to back to back. Back to back to back. That'd be crazy. That would that would just make me angry at that point. Actually, (laughs) I would love it. I mean, I would love it, but it would also make me mad at the same time. I'd be like, bro, where was this earlier in the season when we needed it? (laughs) Yeah, I'd be like, bro, why won't you like this before? (laughs) (laughs) Why must you shatter my heart in this way? (laughs) It's like I'm happy, but yet I'm sad. Yeah, it's like he's he's going out on a win, but like this would have been useful like ten races ago. This would have been useful in the round of sixteen. <laughs> no, for real. But um, God, <laughs> you got any any other cup notes? Um, to take care of. I feel like the cup race is also pretty. I don't want to say underwhelming, but there wasn't a ton that happened outside no, it of was the, a good uh, race, the Wallace. It was a good race. Like once again, like I said earlier, I'm not saying it was a bad race. I'm just saying <coughs> that in terms of like shit going on, there wasn't a whole lot of shit going on. Outside yeah. of the uh, the elephant in the room and the string of late race cautions that yeah brought about the Logano win. Nah, it was pretty good. Nothing else. I got. I think that's it. And that's it. We had a good time covering good old Las Vegas. Las Vegas and then uh, will be. <sighs> Excuse me. There's a big yawn. Sorry. Um, oh, and then we'll be covering some more. Oh, yeah. We're going to Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait for that. That's going to be fun. We're going championship racing in Phoenix, y'all. We're in the final four. We are in the final four. Step aside, Josh and Joey. We're the true winners in Vegas. We're going to Phoenix. <laughs> we're going to Homestead. Yeah, we're going to Homestead. <laughs> <laughs> I love that video. He's so happy. I love it. Okay. <laughs> uh. All right, so I guess with that, we're going to wrap up today's nice little podcast. Ooh, we hit an hour. Look at that. Um, we're, we are. I've gotten better. We've gotten better at being active on social media. And so make sure to hit like on this video, subscribe, share, do all those fun, wonderful things. And also give us a follow on Twitter at Donahue underscore Vargas for some other fun little racing things we've been doing. And with that, we're going to wrap it up here, and we'll see you guys after where are we next week miami that's where we are after after miami